All right. Okay. So, what got you into being a craft cocktail enthusiast? Um, yeah, I started at a pretty young age, um, 18, 19, and I started at a restaurant uh, in Tallahassee, which was in Florida State. Um, I started at a restaurant with a CIA trained chef and a you know, wonderful restaurant menu. Wait, hold on, let me stop here. CIA? Yeah, it's called Great Institute of America. Oh, okay. So, That's a different kind of, CIA. Right? Kind of the, uh, Just making sure. Don't be all. Okay. But uh, amazing, fantastic, locally sourced menu. Everything was fresh, vibrant. Uh, you know, bar program that was. You know, lemon drops and bellinis, and just kind of your usual run of the mill cocktails. And um, as someone who's interested in maybe doing that someday professionally, I kind of thought, why aren't we doing that on, on this side? You know, you're doing everything fresh over here, and then everything over here is kind of powdered and quick and not cracked. Um, and so they let me in 19 to take over the bar program, and I kind of built, basically built the first craft cocktail program in Tallahassee at the time. Um, did that for four years until I graduated uh, with a marketing degree. Uh, I received the opportunity to come over and work at Morse, um, so right before Black Sheep opened up. Um, started as a bartender and quickly moved up, uh, especially as the next restaurant opened and a few people changed places, um, started running the bar program there, uh, and then later on, um, on a consulting basis, took over Black Sheep's uh, bar program as well. Wonderful. So a, a rise to success. Yes. Kind of like the craft cocktails. Yeah. So, you know, for us, for, for most of us that may not know the definition of a craft cocktail, what, what exactly does that mean? You know, I'm used to going to the bar and ask for a drink and here we go. But now there's just, there's, so, there's such an evolution. Tell us a little bit about the whole evolution and what, what the definition is. Uh, it's, really, it's just going back to the roots of the cocktail, which is simple, it's fresh, it's vibrant, it's made with care, it's made with love. Um, and just really going back and focusing on those techniques. And it's not just about getting a quick, easy, convenient drink. It's about doing it right in the way it was done, you know, 75, 100 years ago, pre-prohibition, and then, you know, even afterwards, especially in Europe. Um, just taking it back to what it's always meant to be and not just a, a convenience, but truly an art and a craft and it's something that, you know, people can really be proud of, but also you can go out and know you're going to get a good cocktail. And I think that's where we're at now is people realize, you know, the results of having great cocktails and the, if by doing it right, you really get something special, even if it's simple or, you know, molecular, you know, it can really be anything. It can be three ingredients, it can be more. It's, you know, it's just about doing it right and going back to that craft. Um, you know, the roots of what cocktails are. Where are the roots of the craft cocktail uh, back then and, and now? Where is this, how is this kept on growing? Where did this come from? I mean, really, it, you know, pre-prohibition, it was, everything was fresh, it's just how it was, and then prohibition kind of killed it. All those bartenders moved over to Europe, uh, and that was kind of their payday. Um, and then after that, you know, we came back to the world of a free martini lunch, that moved into tea cocktails, which moved into you know, powdered kind of sour mixes, and you know, the 90s was kind of the, the last of the dark ages with your cosmos, and everything had juices and powders, and I think of the gun. Um, and Is that then, what the, you call it the dark ages of cocktails? It's not our brightest moment. Okay. Uh, so, and, you know, kind of as, really as restaurants and chefs, we kind of became a bigger deal. I mean, now chefs are celebrities, and I feel like the beverage movement is kind of going that same direction. Um, and so as restaurants became, started getting more and more attention, the bar programs kind of fall on suit, and everyone's being fresh and local now. Um, and so it's just a natural progression of the industry, and I think we're finally kind of, that's gonna be here to stay. Uh, it's gonna be the standard, and it's only gonna get better as more and more people learn, you know, what good cocktails are, how they kind of source those fresh ingredients, how to be creative. Um, there's just so much resources out there now. You know, it's, it's got to be the, the trend from now on. It's, it's kind of a fun part, fun time to be a part of the movement. Well, tell us what you're making today. Yeah, so um, kind of being Florida inspired and also with the idea that you can make this at home, I wanted it to be simple, but also uh, kind of fun and custom customizable. Um, so we're starting with Florida Tanya rum. Um, this is not an expensive rum. It's actually what we use as our well at work. Um, we put our well at work is a little bit higher end. Um, but you can find this at the liquor store for probably $20, uh, and way over the for the price of all their rooms too. Um, the Lay, which is one of my favorite secret ingredients, being a French restaurant, you know, there's not a ton of French ingredients that we can use in cocktails that are, you know, that play well with other ingredients. Um, so this is a uh, aromatized wine, so they take white wine and they kind of sweeten it up a little bit, make a little floral, use it with some fruits, some herbs, um, it's very refreshing. You normally drink on the rocks or orange peel. Um, very, very smooth. So that kind of brightens up the cocktail, adds a little flavor. Um, we also use a little bit of honey to sweeten it up just a touch, because uh, the lid isn't quite added enough sweetness. Uh, and then just some fresh lime juice. Um, and the fun part about this cocktail is, so we're adding a little scoop of blackberry uh, jam. So it's something you can get anywhere. Um, so this is perfect for spring. Uh, we also, in testing this cocktail, 
we didn't think. So for the fall, we'll throw some fig jam in this, switch to a dark one. Uh, if, you know, if you like spicy drinks, go grab my action pound shopping for this sriracha jelly. Go now throw some, throw some pepper jelly, sriracha jelly in there, and you get a spicy, almost daiquiri. So there's there's a lot of customization with this cocktail, and it's just you know a couple simple ingredients. Wonderful. All right. Well, let's. Uh, how can I help? All right. The sear sucker. Does the line start here? The line starts right there. It's perfect. Thanks. All right, next we're adding. So we did an ounce and a half of the rum, uh, three four ounce of your Lille Blanc. The room is quiet in, in anticipation of what's happening here. Now we add our lime juice. Now we have our lime juice. Ooh. Up next is our agave. Honey. Nope, we have honey next. <laughs> honey. For you, honey. All right. It smells great. And now we got our blackberry jam. Wow, look at that. Look, vibrant color too. I didn't expect that. Is that what the the uh, jam the jam thing? No kidding. Well, so I, I guess I get first sip. So don't don't look at my face. <laughs> Oh wow, that is really good. I'm not just saying that's really good. Thank you. It's it's not. It's got it's uh it's got nice flavor and it's fruity and it's it doesn't have that overwhelming alcohol taste and uh, it's very refreshing. Thank you so much. You hit the mark. Thank you very much.